Hello, everybody. Showtime. 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 We're back in Nashville, Tennessee, upstairs in the lovely Green Hills section of Nashville. And uh, this is my office. It's my place where I write. It's where I sit at the computer for hours and hours and hours and try to manifest work. It's where I teach. Um, and it's where we've been broadcasting most of our shows during uh, this uh, year-long pandemic. And uh, we will continue doing so until further notice. Today's show, uh, we have Zoe Lewis, our friend who lives down in up in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Michele Gazich is in the green room. He is outside of Venice, Italy. We have the lovely and talented Jamie <laughs> Harris with... Today. I've, I've upgraded. Last week I was what, far away on the bed. Do you remember? Yeah. I was like in the background. We, we put her in the back of the room last week because she was the one person who had a voice that could project. Sam and I combined aren't uh, capable of singing. It. I loved it. I felt like I was in the back seat in the van. <laughs> we it made were, me feel like we're, like on the we're road. really on the road. Yeah. Speaking of really on the road, we grabbed a show, a real show in Houston, Texas. This Saturday night, we will be at McGonagall's Mucky Duck in Houston, Texas. Um, two shows, uh, socially distanced inside. Also, it will be live streamed off of my Facebook page and theirs. Uh, the first show is at 7, is there 7.30? 7, seven or 7.30, I don't know. 7, sold out. 7, oh, it's sold out? Okay, it's sold great. out, but you can still watch the live stream. You can still watch the live stream. Uh, and then there's a 9.30 show, which has, uh, what? I think, like, there are selling tables, um, and they're selling block seats at the bar. I think there are two or three left. Yeah, it's almost sold it's out. It's almost so, sold out. So, um, yeah, socially distanced uh, inside show in Houston live will be live streamed. Um, so you can watch that, us on a real stage, instead of sitting in an office. We'll be standing. Speaking of, we're also going back to Key West. We'll be, form, be performing outside in Key West on Saturday, May 17th. Is that correct? No, May 7th. May 7th. Uh, <laughs> I misread it. It's May 7th. We're going to Key West again. We'll be playing outside. Uh, if you want to come down, um, you can get a 20% uh, discount on a room at the resort uh, included in the ticket bundle mm -hmm. if you want to buy a ticket to the show which i don't think is on sale yet i don't know if it's on sale I don't but we know. also have roots on the rails we're going to winslow arizona with roots on the rails um and that is will you have the dates on that yeah that's uh the 17th of may the 17th of may uh, so there's lots coming up and uh looks like we're starting to break out of here uh, Jamie and I uh, have both been uh, fully vaccinated, uh, and um, uh, we are very blessed to uh, to say that uh, we have uh, received our jabs and are ready to work. So uh, um, most of the shows that we will be playing coming up are going to be socially distanced or half capacity. The venues are making uh, concessions for the pandemic and making sure people are safe. Uh, so uh, onward, upward, and here we go. Well, he'd get home at 5.30, fix his drink and sit down in his chair. Pick a fight with mama Complain about us kids getting in his hair At night he'd sit alone and smoke I'd see his frown behind his lighter's flame Now that same frown's in my mirror I've got my daddy's blood inside my veins Fish swim Birds fly 
daddy shell Mama's cry Old men Sitting think I drink Chicken TV dinner, six minutes on defrost, three on nine. Beard wash it down with another, then some whiskey on the side. It ain't so bad alone here, it don't bother me. That every night's the same I don't need another lover Hanging around Trying to make me change Fish swim Birds fly Lovers leave I What I am, but I don't. Give a damn. Fish swim, birds fly, daddy's yell, mama's cry. song's been around a long time. I think I wrote that song in 1998. Might have been 97. You were seven years old when I wrote that song. <laughs> wow. I'm going to just have a little sip of this and think about that. <laughs> Ninety-seven was a good year. Fleet with Mac, the dance. Ninety-seven was a good year for music, wasn't it? Robert Harris was born. Yeah, it was a great year. It's a great year. Oh, is that your, the year your brother was born? Yeah, my dad graduated from law school. It's a good year. I love your father. I love your mother. I love your family. They're good folks. Jamie Harris has a really nice family. We got to spend a little time with them finally after a year. Over a year. Yeah, yeah. we got to hang out uh, with uh, Jamie's parents. Uh, and the Gilmores, Jimmy Dale and Janet and the family. Colin, uh, Tammy Colin Lynn. and Tammy at the... Um, Tammy Lynn, who taught us how to use this technology. Yeah, initially. Tammy Lynn, who so. taught us this technology at the, uh, st by, the by the little pool mm -hmm. in the blue bonnets. All the blue bonnets were blooming around the pool. I put a picture of it on uh, Instagram. And we got to stand around and have a, uh, like a barbecued salmon and some edamame pasta with pesto and conversation and an actual gathering it felt so good it was most everybody's first time to be around a group of people that weren't in their immediate pod for a year and we're all going like ah we used to know how to do this but now I think it might require re-entry and <laughs> but after a little while we ended up inside and a guitar got passed around we swapped songs your dad played an incredible song that he wrote about his, his dad, dad. Yeah. Truly good song, very moving. Uh, and uh, 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 Jimmy Dale sang that song called Colorado. 
Yeah, and that there is another Colorado. Another Colorado, oh, awesome. and yeah. it was it was like old times. The switch was kind of rusty. We had to toggle it a little bit, but we got it turned on, and and then we remembered. Oh, we know how to hang around these people. We love each other. But reentry is weird. It takes um, resocializing. I, I found myself um, on the flight to Austin really overwhelmed by the proximity of other human beings. That was my first flight in a year and two months. And I, I realized, oh my God, these people are so close to me and I don't know them and I don't want them this close to me. And on an airplane, it's nobody's fault. It's just that's how it works. And uh, oh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I, I, is it going, I, you know, I guess what we build up a tolerance for that over time and then... Uh, yeah, I'm okay if we have six feet between us. If we could only have six feet Forever, apart I'm, from I'm each other honestly, on an airplane. That's fine with me. That's called flying private, my darling. We're not there yet. Crescent City disappearing in the rear view mirror Just like she's always done Spend my life running from the ghost of the Vukari That dirty spillway water in the noonday sun Daughters of charity left a mark on me. Oh, keeping secrets just makes you feel alone. Magazine Street stole from me, and I never thought I'd find my way home. Thank God for you. Thank God for you Wake up in the morning I thank God for you I thank God for you I thank God for you Wake up in the morning And I thank God for you The junkie Jones and on a Greyhound bus with a 20 year ticket to a tortured mind. Sirens, sorrow, cigarette butts. My Jesus in pieces blowing like the highway lines. Thank God for you. God for you Wake up in the morning I thank God for you Thank God for you Thank God for you Wake up in the morning I thank God for you You gave me something no one can take away You saw right through me But you love me anyway Oh, I thank God for you I thank God for you Wake up in the morning I thank God for you I truly Thank God for you. I thank God for you. Wake up in the morning. I thank God for you.
Rusty Gaucher, they call me. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I better, I better practice. <laughs> ah, I'm getting there. I'm well, you're getting practicing there. your swimming right now. So I'm practicing my swimming. That's right. Steam train Maury died last night. His wife Wanda by his side. He caught the westbound out of here, up the high irons to the by and by. They say he jumped 10,000 trains, rode a million miles for free, helped out at VA hospitals and penitentiary. Dandy Dave, rusty nails and sweet lady sugar cane. Dead Eye Kate and the baloney kid raised their cups tonight in the steam train's name. Senators and congressmen, puppets on a string. Among windswept vagabonds, steam train was king, he was the last. Of the hobo kings, the last. The hobo kings. Bums just drank and wander around. Tramps dream and wander too. But a hobo, he was a pioneer and preferred to work for food. He knew how a nation was doing by the length of a sidewalk cigarette butt. Born with an aching wanderlust embedded in his gut. Beaten, laughed at, broke, chased out of every town with his walking stick scepter, with his shredded coffee can crown. The last of the hobo kings. Freeman or hobos, Steinbeck said, and paid him cash. The stories that he bought from them helped him write the grapes of wrath. But boxcars have been sealed for years, and trespassers do time. And railroad yards, they're razor wired, now hoboing's a crime. So here's to you, steam train Morris. 
hold that westbound tie as you ride off into history the last hobo the last ride the last of the hobo kings the last goodness well we are very lucky to have Zoe Lewis with us today hey. whom we ran into when we were in Key West because she was playing at the studios of Key West a wonderful venue uh, down on the island uh, that I hope to play for uh, come 2022 uh, I have not played there but oh my gosh I've had my eyes, eyes on it for years it's a it's a beautiful place, and uh, let's bring Zoe in and talk about Great. talk about that. Hey! <laughs> so so fortunate that we bumped into each other at the Geiger Key Paddle Hut. I know if you, it's serendipity, because if I hadn't have bumped into you there, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. So it it's was, meant to be, I think. It was so cool. We we were we were we were getting our kayaks ready and you guys were coming off the kayak and uh tortuga jack was our guide did he take you out as well no we just went on our own kayaking just went on and, your then, own? and then i came back you know after having a lovely time in the mangroves and there's <laughs> mary gaucher standing there with jamie and and it's a small world is it not and i was like hey and then hey, you introduced me quickly to Tortuga Jack. Then I saw him on your show. And lo and behold, I went back there for lunch another time and bumped into him and he hung out with us. So. Oh, that's so great. Oh, he reminds me oh, so he's... much of the character in The Last of the Hobo Kings. Yes. Tortuga uh, Jack reminds me of Steam Train Maury. And I fell in love with him at first sight um, and knew I wanted him to come on the show. So we brought him to our hotel room and he, he recited poetry and told stories, and I just, uh, we just love him. He was, uh, you know, as soon as, I mean, he just came and got his cup of coffee and sat at the table and told us stories and what he knows about nature there. I mean, did you have a great tour with him? Oh, he oh, knows yeah. those waters like the back of his hand. He, mm -hmm. he reached down in and pulled up a conch shell for us. Wow. Um, he showed us all the hidden um, jellyfish that were in the water, breathing in the water. And if you stir the water a little bit, they they elongate. He showed us the upside um, down jellyfish. Did yes. you see the upside, upside down downs. jellyfish? Yes. Yeah. He he showed us the little um, secret passageways through the mangroves and talked about uh, the the uh, the way that the uh, drugs were smuggled through there uh, a while ago. Uh, mm -hmm. in uh, in drops and people uh, in boats in the, in 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 the waters of uh, the Key West area Geiger Key area would come and pick the uh, drops up the that square were in my... grouper yeah square grouper yeah. that's what they call it square grouper yep. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what a that. what a wonderful end or beginning actually end of your 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 hike uh, and the oh. beginning of our hike uh, to bump into each other down there and I knew oh my god you got to join us on one of these shows but we got to hang out uh, on the beach together and mm -hmm. watch that marvelous band I forget the name do you, do you remember um, their name Coconut Victrola Victrola yes that on the beach was... yeah if everyone anyone goes to um, Key West go and hang out on Higgs Beach on a Sunday at sunset and there's a great band who play there every week for Coconut Victrola Oh, the lead singer is such an entertainer. Yeah. She's a star. She holds an audience in the palm of her hand. She has, uh, she has whatever it is, she has it. 
She does. Uh, and um, what a wonderful uh, afternoon that was, a sunset uh, afternoon on the beach towel in the sand. It was, it was mm -hmm. fun, wasn't it? Oh, my, it was great. Well, it's I rather nice it. to be warm and to listen to music. I mean, socially distanced outside, and then the sun sets, and you can dance, and, you know, it's just... it's. It doesn't get much better than oh, that. Oh, and we met your marvelous partner, Sharon, who we both fell in love with. Oh, she what loved a, you, yes, too. She's so great. She's so great. She is. I'm uh, rather we'll partial. Say hi to her if she's watching. We, uh, she's we, driving to New York right now. Oh, she's, oh that's you're, right. So you're yeah, in Provincetown, Massachusetts I right am. now, Through which is window. your home. Yes, Pete Ann, I've lived here for the 30 years. I, in yes. fact, remember hearing I drink. Back in the day, I was I was in this country then when you wrote that. Wow, it was when at Jamie the was open. Seven. Jamie was seven. <laughs> we were at the open mic. Was it at the Muse open mic? Oh uh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> and that's still going. I mean, Is that's it? in its thirty-first year or whatever. Yeah, I mean, they had to do it virtually this year, but. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Got, I'd drive down from Boston and go play a single song at the Muse open mic. And, uh, but the whole of the town would come because there's nothing else going on in a Monday. It only happens in the winter. So if you drive down and Commercial Street looks empty, but then you just go into this one place and everyone's there. So it's a great community. Oh, and the food, was, the food was so good and the fireplace was going and it just felt so... I have very fond Aww. memories of it. Uh, Come back, please. Uh, yeah, you know, this summer we're coming to Provincetown. I don't know the dates, but we got to come visit. And I think Provincetown, um, I was talking to Jamie about this. I'm currently completely in love with Tennessee Williams. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm devouring, he was such a prolific writer, but I'm devouring b b things that he wrote and books about him. Um, and he was absolutely in love with Key West. And we, I find myself in love with the towns he was in love with. Key Me West, too. Provincetown, New Orleans, oh, uh, Paris, New York. It just, it fits, it suits, it suits well, we me. We have a great Tennessee Williams Festival here in the autumn. And I and know. We, we often have pieces that he's written, performed that have never been performed before, so. I think we stumbled into one always do by... my head in every time I go to those. But, oh, I mean, they're I know. amazing. They're I always amazing. go on a date and I go, here, my darling, let's go and see this. And we're always like, oh, you know. What just you happened? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I it know. might not be the most uh, romantic date, but it's, uh, it, but it's profound. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant writing. Yes. Yeah, we went and uh, it was probably two years ago. Uh, played, uh, was it a house concert down there? I think so, yeah. It was a house concert. Yeah, Bob and Weiser. Day, we just like oh, checked in and we kept, we saw this like sign that just said Tennessee Williams Festival. So we caught the very last play, the very last day. Yeah, and Bob Weiser incredible. hosted us uh, at a He's house great. concert uh, from the radio station down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we had a little time off. And so I said, Jamie, let me show you the tip of Cape Cod. And, you know, we were staying at the incredible Land's Inn. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as we went to the Provincetown Inn at the very tip, it said uh, Key West, uh, I mean, sorry, Provincetown Tennessee Williams Festival. And so we walked in and we got tickets and we sat down and we found ourselves just face to face with the actors right there on this mm -hmm. little stage. And it was covered in rose petals. Oh, and my God, it was such a moving thing. It was it's such great. a... I mean, they bring people in from all over the world to perform there and people come to see it, but we they take over little venues that they don't usually have shows in. I mean, there's been tents on the beach, um, the old fish house at the end of the pier, which is all dilapidated and falling down. I mean, an amazing place to see um, a pop-up theater, you know, and guest houses. They've You follow them around and they do the whole play all around the guest house. I mean, I love theater like that, so. Yeah, you know, uh, one book I just finished reading, uh, Tennessee's first um, deeply uh, moving affair um, was uh, started in Provincetown. Uh, it it uh, was uh, it, it changed his life. The the romance, the summer romance that he had in Provincetown, mm -hmm. which is known for summer romances. Yes. Um, so yeah. So um, like Tennessee, Provincetown is one of my favorite places in America, and uh, uh, living there for thirty years. Wow, you've seen it all. You've seen. Well, so I've seen much it change. I've seen, and but it's still you know it's ninety percent national seashore. Thank God, because otherwise they'd have developed it. But you know that is, I, well, I was saying before I come from the seaside in a little English village, 
on the south coast. So as soon as I found Provincetown, I was like, this is the place home. for me. It's home. It's by the water. It's gay, friendly, you know. It's the artistic bohemian. All these writers have lived here. Um, it's historically beautiful. I mean, the, the t it's got a great, it did have a great Portuguese community. There's remnants of that. But there's so many layers. Each, every year I, I'm here, I find another layer of the community, another thing to explore. It's never boring. You always find new marvelous wonders here and um it's an amazing play it's a portuguese fishing village and it's a bohemian gathering place it's very very gay friendly um it's where painters paint writers write i mean i run into john waters there several times mm -hmm. um uh what was the name of the guy who started the village voice do you got his name someone mm -hmm. in the chat uh uh he started the village voice he lived there wow. um um, uh, for well, Norman Mailer lived here. That's I the mean, man, Norman Mailer. Oh, he started the Village Voice. He did. I remember sitting on the little plane with him, and uh, I didn't, I, and I didn't know who he was. And we chatted the whole way across. And I was like, "What's your name?" And he went, "Norman." And I'm like, "I'm Zoe." I was like, "Norman who? I know everyone in town. Who are Norman who?" And then he went, "Norman Mailer." And then I couldn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not exactly sure what you did, but I know it was big. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah was, he was he was uh, fond of of writing there. Um, well, he's an amazing writer. I mean, you know, he, there's lots of people who, who are not so keen on him, but he uh, was he's very a rabble rouser kind to me, and he came to my show after that, and I met all his family. You know, Mary Ro Oliver lived here too. I, it was know. the one place you could get signed poetry books uh, the, that Mary Oliver uh, signed at the local bookstore on Commercial Street in Provincetown. No, nowhere else could you get them. And, uh, and John Waters used to work there with her, I think, in the oh old days. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, it's, it's, and R Rachel Maddow is here too now, and we have, oh, many celebs. But oh. that's, it's like New York City. You don't care about You just, like, talk uh, yeah, to people yeah. on the beach about their dog or if they went swimming, you know, and they like the water. And then you Google them when you get home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit, what, who's that? <laughs> He's really just another guy in flip-flops. Exactly, uh, exactly. With, with a little bit of fire behind the eyes, right? Uh, but um, we'd love to have you play some music for us. Zoe, would you... Would you uh, serenade us with two songs, uh, please? I will serenade you. I'm going to take my earplugs off, all right? So you got it. I'll talk Thank to you. you after. All right, well, I'm from England. Rotting Dean is my little village outside of Brighton. And, uh, you know, I, my parents were much older. My mum had me when she was 51. My dad was probably about, I don't know, 55. Um, when I was 11, he retired. So I had, it was like growing up with my grandparents. And I was a noisy little girl, hard to believe, I know, and my dad liked it quiet. And if I wanted to hang out with my dad, I had to, had to remain quiet. And uh, we would spend lovely times if I kept quiet. <laughs> and um, the thing is, we would go to the beach in the summer, me and my mum, and when the tide went out, sometimes my dad would turn up with six fishing nets over his shoulder and uh, he'd beckon to me and I'd follow him like a little duckling and we'd head out far, far out to the ocean and these were prawning nets and we have chalk white cliffs so the chalk falls in and makes little caves and that's where we would place the nets under the seaweed and wait to catch prawns but we could only catch them if we were quiet, no sploshing and those quiet moments with my dad were some of the loveliest memories and then we'd walk home past the church, past the duck pond, past the three pubs, past the village green, and we'd go up a little lane. And when I'd go up the little lane, he'd say, what's this on the floor, darling? And I'd look, and I would find one of these. This is an English sixpence. He would drop it on the floor for me, but I thought it was magic. It took me till I was about 16 to work out. He had been dropping the sixpences. Love can be shown in many ways. Ice cream and fish and chips, I put my fingertips inside your palm. 
across at the traffic lights All the commuters look longingly At the prawning nets under your arm And the rug pools shine in the chalky mist And you say to me, here are some fishermen's secrets My darling, but please Don't tell the tourists always, always, always a sixpence There was always, always, always a sixpence From under the bladder rack I took a treasure back home from the sea, ticking and tiny, deliciously briny. I know this land, each stone, each corner, each tree. And the tide comes in, and we walk the lane. And you say to me, keep your eyes open for magic, my darling. And just like magic, it's there again. There was always, always, always a sixpence. There was always. Goodbye. Hello. Please Hello. Play, another. Yeah, play another. That was delightful. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Please keep going. <laughs> All right. Let's go to New Orleans with my glasses this time. Now I know well, we were mentioning Tennessee Williams and New Orleans, and can you imagine me like leaving my village in my 20s and traveling around the United States? I mean, I did jump some freight trains actually on the West Coast, just like your hobos. But I um, made it to New Orleans and I had been searching for jazz all my life so I was so happy to be in the uh, birthplace of Louis Armstrong, Jelly Roll Morton. I was like a little sponge seeping up all of those grooves and I was waiting for a friend of mine in a bar to uh, go out and hear some music and as well as jazz, you know, voodoo is big there, the magic. And, and in came this chap wearing a long black cloak um, he had a, a gold tooth, I remember. He had a stick, and on the stick was a skull. A voodoo man. And I smiled at him, and he came right up to me, and he looked me in the eyes, and he said, I am the Prince of Love, and I can bless you with love for the rest of your life. For five dollars. Well, I had five dollars in my pocket. I gave it to the man. And uh, well, the rest's history because he got out rabbit's foot, magic, magic spells, speaking in tongues, and he blessed me with love for the rest of my life. 
for five dollars. So uh, I left feeling the love on a cloud along Bourbon Street. I went to hear music. I, I came back to Provincetown. I told my friend the story and she said I was there and I got blessed too with love for the rest of my life. But she paid two dollars. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is to you, Mary and Jamie and everyone out there, I can now bless other people with love for the rest of their life for free. This is to all the voodoo people out there and the Prince of Love who can't be found at the moment in New Orleans. Away down south in New Orleans, a land of the Mardi Gras kings and queens, one more royal on the scene. The Prince of Love, he will make a special brew to keep the romance back for you. A Dixie beer and a dollar or two, yeah, that Prince of Love. Street, a bar to bar on the bourbon beat, a tooth of gold and a whiskey need, yeah, that prince of love. <laughs> But you're here, just what you wanna hear Must be time for another drink One more for the food to shrink He's a cousin of Marie Laveau, I thank you That Prince of Love Yeah <laughs> Intoxicating to the core He's full of the spirit, that is for sure <laughs> While the night's on fire and the moon's aflame and they're playing jelly roll again, the real McCoy is on the game. Yeah, that Prince of Love. Put your hands together. Hmm. Cause my grandma see your grandma sitting by the fire. Hey. My grandma, see your grandma, gonna set your flag on fire. Talking about hey now, hey now, hey now, hey now. I go, I go, and eh. Whoa, Jack and Wolf in a nanane. Jack and Wolf in a nanane. That Prince of Love, he gonna light your fire. Prince of Love, I wanna do that for do Prince of Love. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Prize, <Pleasure. laughs> That was exhausting. Oh, <laughs> man, that's fun. Uh, fun. I love the feeling. It's well, goodness. Thank you. It's goodness. It's so funny, like, jamming here on my own. Like, not even <laughs> anyone in the house. I'm like, I feel like <laughs> <I'm happy." laughs> Well, if the you know, UPS man goes by, he'll be like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> it's my job, mate. <laughs> yeah, it is. Go well, you make me want to play my Louisiana song, so here we go. Yay. Gonna, I'll bring you back for two more shortly, okay, hey, my friend? Thanks a lot. The Parade of Souls. Marches across the sky. The heat and light bathed in blue as they march by. As the all stars play, when the saints go marching in. Until the second line forms, they wave white hankies in the wind. Now Sajmo takes his solo, flashes that million dollar smile.
Marie Laveau promenades with Oscar Wilde. Big funky Stella twirls a little red umbrella to the beat. As the soul parade winds its way down eternity street. Souls ain't born. Streets at sundown. Spy boy meets spy boy. Big chief meets big chief. Uptown. Oh, they circle and sway in rainbow-colored feathers and beads. Yes, they prance like peacocks, children of slavery free. Sipping them wormwood concoctions, drinking some absinthe and talking trash. Oh, it's a red carpet, black tie, all night celestial bass.
end of the world. to rock and roll whatever that means for a folk, folk singer folk, folk, folk and roll, roll. Let's, let's go to italy let's go to italy <laughs> ciao maestro welcome to italy my friends <laughs> <laughs> wow what a great trip uh, to louisiana in the last two songs i loved right. it yeah. wow wow it was great and i'm also happy that i decided not to play piano tonight because we have a fantastic <laughs> piano player with us wow wow that Isn't was she really incredible great. Yes, yes, she, she's fantastic. I yes, love this. Yes, yes, yes. she's an incredible pianist, songwriter, entertainer. Isn't it fun? A, a, what a great performer. I love I, it. I yeah, love it. I know, mm -hmm. I know, I know. So, how's the Italian in the attic doing? Uh, we are, uh, we are uh, <laughs> surviving. I am in a beautiful home with a mm -hmm. nice roof, so everything is. Uh, is uh, we are uh, we are resisting, yes, and uh, we are uh, slowly being vaccinated. But it's it's really slow the process. But uh, slowly we are are going on, and so I try to resist. I can't wait uh, for that. But uh, it's uh, one of the few things in life uh, for. Uh, um, um, one of the few things for me, uh, I am too young for this. So this is the problem. I am too old for everything, but I am too young for the vaccine for in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I will look for that. But I will find a way in some way. Because I want to be back on the road. I want to be back on the road. But uh, this week I had um, some um, nice... Um, taste of the road because i was playing uh, in a recording studio a jamie harris song <laughs> uh, that was cool uh, because i remember that we played uh, this beautiful song on the road in, uh, in in many places and so uh, and i loved the song so i knew that uh, jamie was working on a new album last days and i told her jamie do you want uh, a fiddle <laughs> on that song that I love so much? <laughs> and she said, okay, Michele, let's do it. And so I went to the recording studio in Italy and uh, I did it. So I would love to do it in the same studio with you. But anyway, this is, uh, this is something. And uh, we could do that. And I love this song that is called The Fair and Dark Haired Lad. And the title is like a and all the English folk ballads, but uh, the mood is really different. So, but, uh, and I loved, and I tried to put some uh, mystery in the song uh, with my violin uh, part. Um, now uh, we can't hear uh, the, new, uh, the new songs, but I can play an instrumental version of it. So you have uh, an idea of this uh, fantastic song. Thank, Thank you, you Jamie. It was a joy to play. It. And you know, this song was written in Lafayette, Louisiana. So we're kind of sticking with the, the Louisiana theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was Another Louisiana theme. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm ready for the third Louisiana song of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Michaela. Thanks, my. Thank you. A little bit like this. my fiddle and that will be ready Thank you. 
Wow. It was really? a was a interpretation of your song <laughs> that I love great. so much, uh, the melody and uh, thank you. So um, it was great to play the third Louisiana song of the night. <laughs> and you know, here uh, around uh, Venezia is not so different from uh, from Louisiana. It, it's all canal, uh, flatlands, swamps, high water many times. So you have to come here. Yeah, yeah. Who is it? Venice and New Orleans, two cities uh, that have to survive the sea and may not. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, two threatened yeah. cities, actually. But um, yes. I wanted to yeah. tell you that um, that the last time you and Jamie played that together that I remember was at the Union Chapel in London. Yes. And uh, it was magnificent. I wish we had a a video recording of that performance. Yeah, that room sounds so glorious. It's a beautiful old church. And you two were so locked in uh, in the yes. performance. Uh, and I'm really excited to hear what you recorded. Um, just so people know, Jamie's been in the studio in Austin, Texas, making a new record uh, last week. Uh, and uh, it's very close. We've got maybe another two days of recording to go, but it's very close, and we sent uh, tracks, the producer sent tracks to Italy for Michele to record uh, on this song, and uh, I can't wait to hear what you did. I have not heard it yet. The producer does have it, though. Jamie got notice that he received it, so I can't wait to put it in the car and crank it up and listen. I can't wait. Let me know, Mary, what to think about that. Let I me know. Let know me know I'm going to love it. What you just did was amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it in play with the band and the vocals. It's it's incredible. We love you, Maestro. We missed you. Um, I love you, too. I love you, too. And I would love to be in Houston with you. I remember that uh, I we we played uh, the... This song also at uh, at uh, McGronig and uh, Mucky Duck, uh, I remember. That's right. I have, yeah. also, I have also a recording of that show that is a, a good one. Yes. Of the Mucky Duck show? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I was listening to the recording to, to go back uh, to the song and to think about that. And I said, oh, this was a, a great show. Listen to it, Mary. It's oh, a good one. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even know if I have that. You get them from the board and I don't, I never gather them, but you do. I'm glad you have that. Yes, yes, yes. And you have it too somewhere. Check it, check it because it's a good one. Okay. Yeah. I have a pile of stuff I never listened to. Yeah. I figure when I'm dead and gone, somebody might dig it up. But uh, I am excited to hear the recording uh, that you oh, made. Yes. And oh, yes. I'm excited That's, uh, to. To, uh, to finish the record and, and get that in the queue and get things, you know, get things yes. going. Uh, we, we, uh, we will be together soon, and until then, we will keep doing this, all right? All right, and I can't wait to be on the road with you again. Same, same. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. We ciao, love you. Ciao. Anyway. ciao, ciao. So, I think it would be cruel not to play that song for folks. We're, st we're staying in Louisiana. Let's just do <laughs> This was uh, written with the incredible Dirk, Dirk Powell. Powell. Yeah. In my first street before I could drive, Mama left it on the counter half full one night. Loved the fire in my chest, shook the hand of the fair and dark haired lad. He crept through the boards, hid behind the door. Now he ain't got a reason to hide no more. Took the seat at the table that my daddy once had. The fair and dark haired lad. i 
laughter howls like a dog gone mad The fair and dark Shut eyes in a vacant stare. He took everything I ever had. The fair and dark haired lad. Turn the engine over, roll the windows down. Let the note to tell him where I'm bound. I say goodbye, tip my hat to the fair and dark haired lad. Such a good song. Thank Can't you. wait for everybody to hear it. I've heard the basic tracks with the drums, and, and it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Thank the you. Boom, It's yeah. so good. Mark did a good. Yeah, and um, someone posted about the Patreon there, and uh, I will totally share it with the Patreon people first. Absolutely. Oh, well, there so you go. Good... If you jump onto uh, JamieHarris.com, uh, Patreon.com, I don't know. what, what is Either it? one. You can find the Patreon. Find Jamie on my Harris website. on Patreon, uh, become a patron, help her fund this record, uh, and receive early. Um, listening uh, to the tracks as... Uh, listening, as like pictures, stories, uh, when the music... There will be a music video for this song, too. So all that stuff, patrons see it way before. So, yeah, become else. a patron. As little as $3 a month, uh, you make the choice of the level. But uh, it's through patronage that Jamie is able to uh, to um, to keep the, the music uh, recordings coming. And we appreciate uh, your help there. I do a quick word from our sponsor, which is me, and then we'll bring Zoe back for two more songs. So real quick, if you haven't done it yet, I would like to have you consider buying my life's work. Ten records in a box. Ten records in a box that they all fit in. It's called a bundle. Fifty bucks. Get it to you in the mail on Monday. Ten records. It's everything I've ever made on on CD, and we also, of course, have vinyl, lots of it, vinyl of a bunch of different records. Those are on my website. Uh, what else we got going here? Oh, I wanted to mm. mention, we still have signed posters with you and me and oh, Michaela. Oh, yeah, these are great. Yeah, Mary Jamie Michaela, I sign them, uh, and uh, we get them out to you in a poster roll so they don't get destroyed mm -hmm. by the... Uh, what's left of the American Post Postals, Office. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also happy to write lyrics uh, by hand. Um, I've been doing these for people during the pandemic. Um, a lyric uh, written on a thick, frameable piece of paper uh, and uh, sent to you um, with uh, my signature on it um, of your favorite Mary Gaucher song. And I'm happy to do that as well. Been uh, writing up a few this week, actually. Uh, so that is uh, the uh, sales pitch of the night. Oh, and we also have the book pre-order as oh, well. Oh, the book pre-order. Yay! The book. This is a galley. It's an unedited version of the book that um, we have on hand. And uh, we marked it up. They're fixing any typos, etc. Any wrong dates, anybody... 
uh, who uh, might have gotten their name misspelled and stuff like that. The galleys are being corrected, and they should be printing hard copies soon. The street date is July 6th, uh, and uh, you can pre-order it uh, at your favorite bookstore. Uh, we encourage you to buy it at a local bookstore, uh, but you can, of course, always go to Amazon uh, if you don't have a local bookstore, which is true of a lot of communities now, sadly. Devastating. Sadly. Bring back the bookmobile. Bring back the bookmobile. Support your local bookstore. Um, anyway, let's hear some music from Zoe Lewis. Yay. Let's bring back Zoe. Hey! Congratulations <laughs> on the book and congratulations um, on the new CD, um, Jamie. This is very you. exciting. Thank you, Zoe. <laughs> um, well, I have... It's not so new, but it's probably a year and a bit old. Um, and it's got always a sixpence on. And the next song I'm going to do... Um, and this is, if you can see, this here is a, it's in Rudyard Kipling's wall. Rudyard Kipling lived in my village in England. Is that right? And this is a stone that's been there for centuries. Wow. And it's a wishing stone. And my dad or mom used to lift me up when I was little. And if you, if you stroke its nose three times and you turn around three times, then your wish comes true. So... If you buy my CD, you actually can rub the front three times and turn around <laughs> and you get a wish too. So all these wow. products. Eh? Ma magic childhood you had. Well, yeah, I mean, I did. And then I hit the road. It was good for me to come to the United States and truly find myself. So uh, it took a while, but we here travel. I am. We travel. We are on this road that we don't know where it goes, and that's how we need it to be, I think. It's true. Uh, it's very true. I went to all over around the world looking. <laughs> I have been to over 70 countries now. Um, wow. I just can't stop. I really got the wanderlust when I first left. Me and too. actually this, you know, for me it was good because, of course, it's not just how it was where you were born or where you grew up or, you know... If, if I lived here in Provincetown, I'd think the whole rest of the world was like this. If it, My village is totally different. Well, it's a bit similar to Provincetown because we have a lot of old ladies with poodles by the sea. And then I moved here and it's all young gentlemen with poodles. So it is similar in one way. But, you know, it's good to travel. <laughs> it's good to travel indeed. It helps with the creative... Um, uh, fire, I, you know, Tennessee, I was reading in a, a book last night, Tennessee said he, he had at least three places that he felt were his home. Mm. Well, I, I relate to that. Mm -hmm. I love to, I don't know about you, for me, I write much more when I'm moving because it keeps my cogs going. And I, I, when I'm moving, then everything starts moving. You know, I, I love to write on the road. And also, but it, you know, it's you see everything new when always everything's new. It's the first time you're seeing it. So then when I come home, I try and make myself see my home like that. You know, mm. the things in my house or the things with my friends, you have to see them in with new eyes sometimes to, I, for me, that's how I try and get inspired. Same, you know? same. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Shall I do one? Do two. Do two. Well, Mark Twain said, um, travel is the enemy of all prejudice. So let's take these out. It's good to try on different people's shoes every now and then. Empathy. I know you guys are We're getting in a whole lot of trouble Cause everybody's living in their own little bubble Close your eyes and the country falls I've always liked bridges better than walls Some like blue, some like red Some like to watch Fox News in bed Swallowing the Kool-Aid, it's so clear I'd rather be ruled by love, not fear These shoes, try on these shoes Try on these shoes Somebody else's shoes Try on these shoes Try on these shoes 
take a walk in somebody else's shoes. And I scratch my head in disbelief as you shun the ones who need the most relief. Can you not see when the powerful use their position to bully? We're all gonna lose. And imagine if the tables turned and suddenly you were the one being spurned. Would you break down? What would you do? Would you have another point of view? These shoes, try on these shoes, try on these shoes, somebody else's shoes, yeah. Try on these shoes, try on these shoes, before you talk, take a walk in somebody else's shoes, yeah. We come first, we are the best and you are the worst Finger on the button so you better beware The diplomacy vanishes into thin air And what do the children learn as they grow With a white house whiter than snow Step out your box, come on, open your eyes Try on shoes of a different size These shoes, these shoes Oh, these shoes Somebody else's shoes Try on these shoes, try on these black shoes Take a walk in somebody else's shoes. <laughs> that was written during the last administration. And there is hope, of course, and change is afoot. And um, I'm going to do one more song and thank you all very much for listening. Please tune in. I have a, um, I have my own show next Sunday, but it's perfectly after Mary and Jamie's. So uh, ZoeLewis.com is my um, website, and Zoe Lewis um, Facebook I put it on. And I hope you all come to Provincetown in the summer. It's beginning to open up. And thank you, Mary, and thank you, Jamie. This is one that I wrote when I used to live in a little 1850s house, you'd go up a rickety stair and it was right by all where everything was happening in town and upstairs I had a drag queen, downstairs there was a, a leather boutique um, and next door there was a, a jeweller, an old veteran guy who uh, would make commitment rings. All night he would stay up knocking on silver, creating beautiful things. He had old oak beams that were from ships and there were different tools for his jewellery and I would go sometimes to borrow tools to fix my bicycle and one day he said will you do me a favour today Zoe and I said yes and he got down from one of the old shelves a big urn and he gave it to me and he said this is the landlady's ex-girlfriend it was her dying wish to be placed in the province town bay I know you've recently acquired a rowboat would you take care of Geraldine? And I took the urn. I was very confused. Why has this come to me? I thought. And then I, I went and I said, this is a lot to ask for, for borrowing a wrench, but I will take care of Geraldine. And I went down to the water. I rowed out with Geraldine. I opened the top um, and I, I found a beautiful, beautiful place to tie my boat on a little buoy. And it was sparkling and beautiful, just like it is out there today. And I thought, what, what's happening? But maybe this is where I too will be placed when the time comes. And I didn't realize it comes in a plastic bag and I didn't have scissors, so I had to use my teeth. But anyway, I put her ashes all around the boat. And I said, rest in peace, Geraldine. And I got out my fishing pole because I had one in my boat and I, I cast out and then I realized that I believe in magic. So I said, 
Catch me a fish, please, Geraldine. And you know what happened? Straight away, I caught a beautiful summer flounder. Some call it a fluke. Magic does happen, ladies and gentlemen. Don't ever let go of believing. I really don't know you. But I hold you in my eye, hands. Fly away on the wings of the wind. Ashes thin as sand and I wonder about you. Did you really love this place? Full of summer memories and salty kisses on your face. And it's silver as a sixpence, it's blue as the moon. Calm as a mill pond today waiting for you. I guess I'll make a wish now. One can always dream, so I say, catch me a fish. Catch me a fish, Geraldine. Ah, 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 ah. And there you go dancing, way down deep, to the place where the starfish and the periwinkle sleep, and it must be quiet now. Nothing left to say, silent as a cloud on a wingless day, and it's silver as a sixpence, blue as the moon, calm as a mill pond today, waiting for you. Cause I believe in magic, I sing to Mermaid Queen, I sing, catch me a fish, catch me a fish, Geraldine. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I was trying to show you the piano. I was love actually it. playing a piano, not just it wasn't backing tape. I know. I, love it. I was like, oh, this is such a beautiful sentiment and song. Mm -hmm. Thank just you. Just having you with us has made us so happy. I think you made a lot of new fans today. We would love you and uh, oh. the people who've been here are certainly going to check out your show. Thanks, um, you and guys. Your music. It's such an honor to be on this show, and it's a great show. I've been watching you and loving it, and I love hearing the stories, and I love your connection, and you guys are magic. So thanks. Oh, you're magic. You're magic. Yeah. We're going to see you this summer, which is not that far away, given that we're heading towards the uh, the month of May soon enough, and. Uh, yeah. You know, and people are getting vaccinated here, and I'm fully vaxxed now, and and you know we're beginning to get there. We're getting there. The, there's more behind us uh, than in front of us to deal with. Uh, yes, I think you're I right. think, and um, uh, we will uh, we will keep uh, keep our eye on what you're up to, and we will be Cheers. in touch regarding the summer gathering uh, down there in Hooray. Provincetown, Massachusetts. You can go and catch a fish. Yes. <laughs> Walk on the beach, tell stories, sit in the sand, get a blanket, watch the sun go down. There's nothing like the stars in August in Provincetown. It's this so vast. 
It's this is true. Gorgeous just out got a there. Gate, and it's great because there's not a lot of light pollution. So. You see, so many you start yeah. to become, I become awed by the magnitude of it. It's a stunning view of the sky. I mean, there's, you know, there's so many things to, to see here and collect. I mean, we've been, I mean, I have my shellfish license and there's so many things to pick. You know, you may come in blueberry season, but like seeing the stars, whatever there is to pick or gather, you start seeing them everywhere. Wow. You know, whether they're there or not, you, I start seeing oysters <laughs> on Commercial Street because I've just got my oyster eyes on, you know, everything. And it's like the stars. You see the, well, I'm seeing stars right now. Oh, we love you. We miss you. Love you too. We will see you soon. Y'all tune in to Zoe's show on Sundays and visit her website, get her music. And thank you, my friend. Thank you. Lovely to reconnect with you. You too. Always good to see you. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. We are drawing to a close here. It's been 90 minutes, believe it or not. Who's our guest next week? Ordinary Elephant. The Ordinary Elephants will be with us. Super excited. About Super that. excited about having our friends on. Till next week, we'll see ya. Well, my father, sure could use a little mercy now. The fruits of his labor fall and rust slowly on the ground. His work is almost over, and it won't be long, he won't be around. I love my father. He could use some mercy now And my brother Sure could use a little mercy now He's a stranger to freedom Shackled to his fear and death that he lives in It's almost more than living will allow I love my brother He could use some mercy now My church and my country they could use a little mercy now As they sink into a poison pit It's gonna take forever to climb out They carry the weight of the faithful Follow them down I love my church and country They could use some mercy now Every living thing Could use a little mercy now in the race towards another mushroom cloud there's people in power who'll do anything to keep their crown I love life life itself 
could use some mercy We all, we all could use a little mercy now Oh, I know we don't deserve it But we need it anyhow We hang in the balance we dangle between hell and hallowed ground And every single one of us Could use some mercy now Yes, every single one of us mercy now see y'all next week thanks for tuning in